All right, our last stop in chapter 14 is to look at conjugates. Um, we have to memorize the eight strong acids because their conjugates, if you remember, have equal and opposite strength. Um, and if we have a stronger acid, we will have a weaker conjugate. And we just compare them very relatively, except for these eight strong ones. These eight strong acids are so strong, their conjugates, we would typically we would say they would be weaker bases. But since I have strong acids, and there's only eight of them, their conjugates are so weak, they are neutral. So anytime you see these anions, except for this polyprotic one right here, anytime you see these other anions, they have no effect on the pH. They are not basic. Any weak acid conjugates will be a little basic. So we need to differentiate between those and get good at spotting conjugates when the acid is not even present. So when we do that with bases, uh, conjugates of strong bases will also have no effect on the pH. And those are metals. So anything with an OH ion is a strong base. So anything we can attach to that, a potassium metal, a uh, calcium, if we had OH2, calcium metal, my metal salts will have no effect on the pH. There are other positive ions that could, but the metals will not. They will be neutral conjugates. Okay, so here's the data given below, and we need to be able to calculate Ka's and Kb's for different conjugates, um, and that's the equation Kw, it's related to water, because it's in equilibrium, with Ka times Kb, very similar to the acid-base equations we've already seen. So if we have the Ka for HNO2 is 4 times 10 to the negative fourth, the conjugate will have an opposite strength, maybe 4 times 10 to the negative tenth estimation there, but we can calculate it. Uh, it's actually a little different. Um, and we can see what those values are. And the hint here, the fact that they give us the conjugate and say HNO2 is a Ka, that's a clue that this is a base. So we need to be able to identify that too. The problem with conjugates is you cannot look up their Ka's and Kb's because they're regular form is more dominant. So F minus is not something that's typically uh, basic that would, we would just look up because HF is so much stronger. This is the dominant form of that, of that ion. Uh, but let's look at these and calculate them. NO2 minus, that's a Ka 10 to the negative fourth. My Kb will be 2.5 Uh, times 10 to the negative 11th. Uh, F minus, very similar, 10 to the negative 4th, uh, slightly different value, we'll have 1.39 times 10 to the negative 11th. Uh, my aniline, here we've got a Kb for aniline, so this acidic version, and here you'll notice it has a positive charge. Positive ions with hydrogen are acidic because they have hydrogens to give up. So positive ions with hydrogen are very commonly acidic. And then going back to the conjugate bases, negative ions that can accept hydrogens are usually conjugate bases, because they can accept a hydrogen, and that's the definition of our base, except for the neutral ones. Okay, so Ka then for my conjugate of the aniline, uh, Kw divided by the Kb that we're given, will be 2.63 times 10 to the negative fifth. And then my Ka for this positive ion will be 1.11 times 10 to the negative seventh. Um, using the information and the appendix, predict each of the following will create an acid, base, or neutral solution. Um, so there's Ka's and B's in some of the appendixes. Uh, but really, we just want to look at these and separate the ions. So, And this is actually a little tricky. Sodium phosphate, we want to look at the ions as my positive ion and my negative ion. Sodium is going to be a conjugate of the hydroxide. And we said none of the metals are going to have any pH properties. So each individual ion... We're going we're gonna to have to handle separately. Sodium is going to be neutral. My phosphate ion, just a quick look at that when we pull it out, 
has a negative 3 charge. It is not the conjugate of a strong acid, therefore it could accept a hydrogen and turn into HPO4 2 minus. So that has basic properties. So this is going to be a base, a basic salt. Sodium would be a spectator, but the phosphate could be basic. When we look at Ki, if we separate those ions out into the potassium and the iodine, we do the same thing. The potassium is a metal. It will not affect the pH. Iodine is the conjugate of HI. Since HI is a strong acid, the iodine is a weak, neutral conjugate. It's neutral because HI is strong. Therefore, this solution will be neutral. It will have a pH of 7. Ki is a neutral salt. Remember, any ionic things we generally call salts. The next one's a little harder to see, but they give us a clue at the name. Pyridinium chloride. That means my ion, this is an ionic thing, and the break is right there because I have a chloride. Um, so chloride is a conjugate of HCl, strong acid, therefore my chlorine ion is neutral. A closer look at the other ion um, on this side of the equation is HC5H5N, and that has a positive charge. That positive charge with those extra hydrogens means that this is an acid. So, so far one of the ions has been neutral or both with the Ki and then the other one we have to say this negative ion has basic properties this positive ion has acidic properties. The next one's a little bit harder because if we break this up NH4 and F- minus, um, both of those have pH properties. This is an acid it's conjugate, conjugate of NH3, and this is a base. It's the conjugate of HF, and HF is a weak acid. So F- minus will have basic properties. So we need to compare their K values. Ka for NH4+, plus, if we calculated that, is 5.6 times 10 to the negative 10th. My Kb for F minus is 1.38 times 10 to the negative 11th. So we have to look at these when they're both competing for one another and we say which one is stronger. Well my NH4 has a stronger acid properties than my F minus has basic, basic properties. So it kind of overpowers this other one and this solution, although it would be really hard to calculate the pH, this solution we just want to conceptually say is acidic. Some of them, however, we can calculate the pH of. We'll never calculate the pH if they're both competing with one another, but a solution like this we can calculate the pH of. Calculate the pH of a 0.5 molar solution of sodium nitrate, and we have a Ka for HNO2. Uh, first thing we need to do is look at the ion and break it apart. Say, okay, sodium nitrate. My sodium ion is going to be neutral. That makes it a spectator. My nitrate is uh, a conjugate of HNO2, and there's a clue in this problem, so that makes it a base. Getting the balanced equation for these is really important. NO2 minus, if it's a base, we know how to write base equations. Bases take hydrogens. So we're going to make HNO2, we make the conjugate just like before, um, and now it took the hydrogen off the water, we have hydroxide. If we have a Ka for HNO2, we need a Kb for NO2 minus, and it'll be 2.5 times 10 to the negative 11th. And then we, from there, we just set up a nice chart. So we've got 0.5 molar. Uh, we don't ever care about the water, although it has to be there for the balanced equation for bases. Um, we subtract and add x, and then we get to um, x squared over 0.5 minus x equals the kb. We have to use the kb value because it's a base. 
which means x is going to be my hydroxide value, so don't forget about those little things. Um, x is going to be 3.54 times 10 to the negative sixth, which gives me, since it's a base, a pOH, not a pH, of 5.45. Lots of little things here to trip you up. And then we keep going for a pH of 8.55 which makes sense, it's a base. So make sure your ba your pH lines up with what you've classified it as. We know it's a base, so the pH has to be above seven. Uh, the very, very last section we're gonna look at is properties of acids and bases. Um, why are some of them strong and some of them weak? And we kind of, we touched on this at the beginning of the unit. It has to do with bond strength. Um, and here we look at the chlorate hydrogen, the chlorine series of acids, HClO, per chlor or hy hypochloric acid, HClO2 is uh, chloric acid, HClO3, HClO4. I said that wrong. I think it's chlorous acid. Then HClO3 is chloric acid, and HClO4 is perchloric acid. You don't need to know acid names, but... Um, interesting trend here. We've memorized two of these. These are strong acids, HClO4 and HClO3. But for some reason, HClO and HClO2 are both weak. And we can see that as we get more and more oxygens, um, and this is an electronegativity thing, we get stronger acids. So what determine if an acid is strong or weak? Well, it's bond strength is really important. And then the polarity of the molecule, which has to do with electronegativities. So electronegativities and then polarity. So the more oxygens we get here, the more electronegativity, it's all of the oxygens are pulling electrons away from the hydrogen. Remember, to get a strong acid, we want a weak H bond, OH bond. If that hydrogen comes off easy, it means it dissociates easy, and it's a weak, uh, a weak bond makes a strong acid. So those greater electronegativity differences... Uh, sometimes, especially in a large molecule like this, where I've got all those oxygens acting in concert to pull away those hydrogens, make these stronger and stronger as we go. Um, that doesn't quite fit the pattern with HF versus HCl, because HF is the most electronegative, uh, or fluorine is the most electronegative element. But here we've got other things. We can look at size. That, that fluorine is so small that even though it has a really high electronegativity, um, it pulls that hydrogen in tighter because it's one of the smallest ions on the periodic table. So that bond is actually really, really strong because the radius between them is really, really small. Uh, so HF is actually a weak acid. That being said, because their electronegativities are so different, that should make it a stronger weak acid. And it is one of the strongest weak acids because it has a really high electronegativity. That hydrogen can come off pretty easy. So given two acids, HOI, this is the, the iodine series of very similar elements. Chlorines and iodines, remember, they're in the same family. They periodicity, they react the same. So anything that the, the chlorines can do, the iodines can do also. Um, we have two Ka's, 0.17 and 2 times 10 to the negative 11th. Match which one goes with which. Well, we said the more, um, I wrote this wrong. Eraser. Let me just do this. They do say HOI. This one's HIO3. My fault. More oxygens there. HIO3. Um, and we say the more oxygens that are on it, the stronger the acid, because they're making that hydrogen come off easier. So this is going to be my larger Ka is 0.17, and the HOI is going to be 2 times 10 to the negative 11th. There's only one oxygen there. That hydrogen is going to stick on pretty tight. 
and that should wrap up chapter 14.